Hi everyone, my name is Vince and I'm an Applications Engineer here at Hawkridge Systems. Today I want to go over a question we get a lot in our tech support department and that question is what's the difference between creating a sheet metal part from the beginning and converting an existing solid into sheet metal. I'm going to show you the difference between the two right now. I'm going to start by creating a sheet metal part. I have a new part here. I'm just going to create a new sketch on the front plane. So it's going to be a pretty simple sketch, three lines. Make these two points horizontal here. I'm going to exit out of the sketch. Now my sheet metal tab's already turned on. If yours isn't, just right click any of the tabs in the command manager and then you can select the sheet metal tab. If it has a check mark next to it, then it's turned on. So now I'm going to go to this first feature over here, which is the base flange tab. Hit that button. And since that sketch one is pre-selected, it's just going to take me into the property manager. Now I have different end conditions here. So I have start with the blind. I can do up to vertex, up to surface, etc. I'm just going to select blind and I'm going to key in a value. I can put in a second direction and now I go to the sheet metal gauges. If I turn on this use gauge table, I have access to all the sample tables that SOLIDWORKS has. You can also create your own sheet metal ta gauge table based on your shop's parameters. So I'm just going to choose this one and now I get the different gauges available in this table so I'm just going to choose 18 gauge I can change the bend radius I can override the K factor if I'd like to and then I have this auto relief for any additional flanges rectangular tear O brown hit the green check and my first feature is created next I want to create an edge flange on the back edge here so I just hit that button and I can select either inside or outside edge, doesn't matter, SOLIDWORKS automatically will start that flange. And now I can just go to the flange length, I have blind up to vertex, so if I choose up to vertex and select that point, now I know that flange is going to be the same height as the existing flanges. That's my basic part, if I hit the flatten button here, I can unfold the part, see the flat pattern hit it again and now I have the folded part again. Next I want to create a new part from just converting it from a solid part so I have a pretty simple part here it just has one feature in it just a loft so instead of going and using that base flange tab I'm gonna use this convert to sheet metal button turn that on and now I can again use a gauge table I'm going to select that same table from the first part and then I'm going to select 18 gauge again and now it's asking for a fixed entity and in this case the bottom of the box makes the most sense so I'm going to click that face next I'm going to select the bend edges so I'm just going to select these three edges and notice that SOLIDWORKS automatically chooses those ripped edges for me and also notice that because I didn't select a bend edge on this front face SOLIDWORKS is going to remove that. Hit the green check and that's my new sheet metal part converted from a solid. Again I have the flat pattern down here so if I hit the button you know flatten or hit it again and do the folded. So that's the difference between these two methods of creating a sheet metal part. You would use the first method if you know from the start that the part will be sheet metal and the second if you aren't sure. Thanks for watching and if you found this video helpful, please subscribe to our YouTube channel.